Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels of Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you are, may I ask? So I tell you, the accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to help establish what you need to know in the present. And also I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I'll introduce you to my wonderful guest, Kira Lani. But before that, I'd like to say thank you for watching this show live at a later date as it means a lot to me, connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met before, then my name is Ray, and I help women to cross roads in their life, heal their past, create their future, transform their present, so they can take control of their destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use angelic Reiki, future life progression, past life regression, meditation, angel cards, and hypnosis to help women who feel lost get clear on their destiny. I've also created a transformational journey to help you take charge of your destiny. Now, each episode of this show will cover various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or angel card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests like today's guest, Kira Lani, who will be imparting her wisdom about how women can master their energy and connect to their divine nature through connection to nature that will help you with your calling, your passion to be of service to the world and make that your reality. Now, Kira helps healers master uh, their energy to unleash their true gifts through healing tree gong retreats, transformational breath work, mindful movement, meditation, and journaling, both in person and online. Kira is also a writer of prose and poetry, a speaker and a performer using her artistic voice to help others access creative power and live authentically from the heart. She also has her own show called Growing Wings and called Inspiration to Unlock Your Superpowers. And she's got <coughs> testimonials, including engaging in a physical practice designed to expand consciousness with a powerful mentor like Kira Lani can open and support many avenues in your life and must do for all like workers. And I had an emotional meltdown a few weeks back. My therapist wasn't helping, and, but I couldn't really connect with myself anymore. I watched some of your self-love meditation videos and it really helped me a lot. Thank you. It's not enough, Kira. Infinite love and light. So you can see how she can help you. So without further ado, hello, Kira, and welcome to the Angel and Destiny show. How are you today? Hi, Ray. Hello, everyone out there. I am fabulous, and I'm so grateful to be here with you today. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, then whether you're watching live or at a later date, then please hit the like or love button as I love it when I see hearts and thumbs appear on the screen. And if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so that you can get updates on all recordings. Now, you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts as both Kira and I want to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy. We will try to say hello to everyone who says hello and answer any questions or comments live or once the show is finished if we can't get round to them. So, Kira, why don't you tell us more about yourself and then how you can help women master their energy and connect to their divine nature through connection to nature? Sure. Thank you. So, um, gosh, I, I would say my journey started when I was a young child. I, was, I grew up in the forests. The forest was my sanctuary and my playground and my connection to the divine. And when I was five, I had my first self-guided meditation experience. I was blessed to have parents who, my mother had a very strong meditation practice in my early years. So I had, was blessed to be able to witness her journey. And my father left this world when I was very young. So I became fascinated with what more is there beyond this life? And so I had an amazing experience meditating as a child and I fell in love with yoga as a child. So I, that has been a part of my life, my entire life. Then when I was in my early twenties, I was a young mother and I came back to live in the fairy forest that I grew up in. And that is when I learned that I actually can receive wisdom directly from the trees. And I connected, I actually was called to a big cedar tree 
my cat always likes to join the videos, so that's uh, why you see the the tail, the tail uh, curling. So, in my some, case. Sometimes my sometimes my <laughs> my cat Gypsy will join in, and you'll see her tail go across. <laughs> Yes, she always wants to be a part of the action. She's like, right, right. what about me? We'll have to have a cat show sometime. Yeah, that'll so, be good. <laughs> so anyways, the first tree that called to me is a tree that my mother named Grandpa Cedar. And she had a ritual of visiting him every day. And one day she was gone and I went to visit him by myself. And he pulled me in. And it was as if he was saying to me, where is that lady who visits me every day? I miss her. And so I visualized my mother sitting on a beach in Hawaii. And I said, Grandpa Cedar, will you please look out for my mother way over there across the ocean? And then I gently withdrew. I went back to my little cabin with my baby boys. And the next morning I awoke before dawn. I sat in meditation and I sent my awareness back to the tree. I was wondering if we were really connected. And sure enough, I went on a journey. The tree showed me how the trees are connected throughout the entire planet. And um, I rested in this network of light and could feel all of the information around me. I wasn't really tuning into it in that moment, but I would, could definitely sense it. And so later I called my mother, um, or maybe she called me, but I spoke to her later and I shared this with her. And she said to me, wow, I was wondering why Grandpa Cedar came to me when I was sitting on the beach yesterday. <laughs> and so this was my first entry into the idea that I could actually communicate with the trees and that they are interested in communicating with us because that's really what I've come to know is that the trees are calling us back to them. Recently, I have been told by Mother Gaia and the trees, it is time for you not only to bring these people, to bring the people back to the trees, back into connection with the forests, but it is time for you to train others to help you in this mission because it is of vital importance to the planet. Oh. And so, so since, um, since that time of connecting with Grandpa Cedar, I became a yoga teacher, I became a Qigong instructor, and most recently I became a medical Qigong energy healer and through all of those trainings, I was able to develop not only my own subtle awareness and my own gifts, but also a way to help others to connect to their divine gifts because we are all here. Um, we, I believe, and this is what I've been shown, that every human has the divine birthright to be directly connected to true source energy and be receiving guidance directly of what their purpose is and what are their unique gifts. Everyone has unique gifts to offer. Everyone is here for a reason. And just like the trees recognize in a forest, they are a community. Each one is vital to the health of the entire forest. Each one is giving and receiving in balance. This is how humans are also meant to be interacting in community. Each one of us recognizing what is our unique offering and how does that support the health of the whole. And so that, that's become my mission to share that with more women and bring out the empowerment that, that, that comes from that, of knowing that you actually can create your own destiny. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's absolutely brilliant, you know, that the trees have so much that they can teach. Um, they, they can teach us and help us with um, and I don't know if you ever saw if the program ever got aired um, over in America. Um, but uh, do you know Joanna Lumley, the actress? Have you heard of her? 
Mm, I'm not sure. Okay. I've been a little out of touch the last few years. So. Uh, oh, she, 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 so I think she played Purdy in the Avengers years and years and years ago. Uh, oh. And she's an absolutely fab. But she, um, no, sorry, I'm, I'm getting it wrong. It wasn't Joanna Lumley. It was Judy Dench. Sorry, I got okay. that wrong. Judy, Lumley, another one. Judy Dench, I know well. I, her face comes right in when you say her name. <laughs> Yeah, well, she actually um, did uh, a program over here and basically her house, she's planted trees in all her 50 odd years. Um, her and her husband started doing it in memory of people they knew who had passed. And she's very much connected to trees. And she actually um, had scientists and that in who actually went into the trees and actually scientifically showed how the trees were all connected with each other and how they send messages and they all look out for each other um, mm. ab ab about it. So it's, it's really quite, it's really quite good that science has kind of like come in and, and can verify um, things. Mm -hmm. Though we know, you know, and, and people that are on that path know that, that trees can communicate, they can help us and that there are obviously people out there that aren't quite sure. So when the science comes in, they go, oh, mm -hmm. actually, that might, that, that does make a little bit of sense. Yes, I love, I love exploring the science. And that was actually when I first got really excited about the vision that Grandpa Cedar shared with me is when I saw a book by Paul Stamets, who is a mushroom expert from the Northwest of the US here. And he, he wrote a book called Mycelium Running that's all about the way that the mushrooms connect the roots of the trees and send information. And in that book, there's a picture of the mycelial network, and it looks exactly like what Grandpa Cedar showed me. And since I've been working more and more with the trees, they've shown me that not only are they connected through their roots and sharing nutrients and information that way, but they are also connected through the ethers, through what we know as the Akash, and they can also connect us to our Akashic records and the universal consciousness. And this has been a really fun place that I've been bringing my students in to connect to the universal consciousness through the trees. And we use a lot of these practices I was touching on from the Qigong and the yoga mm. traditions of breathing and meditation and mindful movement, because we are here in these human vessels for a reason. If we were just meant to be spirits floating around, we would just be spirits floating yeah. around. And so when we use the physical practices to ground in the spiritual experiences, they become amplified exponentially. And so this is hugely how I help women access their gifts and connect to their divine nature is through connecting more to the physical nature, connecting more to your body. Many people go around all in their mind and they forget mm. to tune in to what they're experiencing in their bodies. And so that's a, a huge part of it as well. Yeah, it is because, because yeah, I, I think a lot of people um, tend to think, oh, you know, if I want to connect to the divine, I want to be spiritual, I need to be up here all the time, you know, to be connected, where mm -hmm. really you actually need to be grounded to bring the energy down here onto earth so that you can be of service and help others and help yourself evolve along your path. Yes, exactly. Yeah, there's there's a great story from the Taoist from the Taoist tradition in the well, the story of Qigong really. It's not necessarily mm. the Taoist tradition, but the story of Qigong is that Bodhidharma came from India and he lived in a cave in the Wudong Mountains in China. And while he was in that cave, he interacted with all the different animals and he created a series of animal movements. And then he found the Shaolin monks meditating in their temple. And they were all just sitting there meditating all day long, just meditating and drinking tea, nothing else. And Bodhidharma came and he said, 
don't you see your bodies are wasting away you cannot reach enlightenment if your vessel is weak if you want to reach enlightenment you have to keep your vessel strong and healthy and that was the spark that birthed the amazing body of martial arts that now exists and the magic that comes through is by connecting the physical, the energetic, and the spiritual all together. That's when we create the alchemy that awakens a new experience of life, which is what so many people are craving, to have that deep and expansive experience of life. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think, I think they are, especially in sort of like today's society with everything that's going on, being busy here, being busy there. And again, it's also, you know, there are people that don't actually live in nature. You know, they it is like concrete cities. Um, and, mm -hmm. that, you know, the bit of nature I see might be some weeds coming through the pavement. You know, they, <laughs> they, 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 don't, act, they don't actually um, see that. But then I suppose that even if they see that weed, they can connect with nature through that weed, really. Yes, I, I actually, that is one of my favorite ways to connect with nature, honestly, because even though I'm a nature girl, I love cities too. I love the creative power of humans and what we've been able to manifest in this reality. And, um, and I think it's important to remember that it's all part of nature because we are part of nature. And so this technology that we are using comes from nature it comes from humans manipulating the raw mm. materials in nature and so it still is part of nature and then not only can you look at those weeds coming through the cracks and recognize the power of nature that no matter what we build mother earth is going to eventually grow through and bring it down but there's also the possibility and and the I, I see this very often that you can connect with nature even through your own nature once you learn how to do it once you learn to create your own roots and connect to nature you don't have to go into nature to connect with nature it does help if you go there sometimes mm. so you have the experience to call back in but you can bring that experience into your experience in the modern world. If you're, I've, I've even had amazing experiences grounding from an airplane. And wow. so when you learn the practices, you can bring them in so that you're not feeling so disconnected by being in a city, being in an airplane or wherever you find yourself, you can bring that back in. So that's, that's a big part of what mm. I'm teaching as well, is how can you connect so well with nature through your own nature that you recognize that it's always there with you and you can always call in that feeling and have that nurturing and healing energy in your life wherever you are. Yeah. Yeah. And I've just had this flash, this, this image going through my mind just then. Um, sort of like everyone on the plane are um, doing their um, Qigong movements as the plane <laughs> the I know. Wouldn't that be great? Usually it's just one or two of us that do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you think about it, if you're on a long flight, you need to actually move it back. Because if you sit, sat there in front of the TV, you know, that TV screen all the time, by the time you get there, you're kind of like, you know, lethargic mm -hmm. and, and like that. So you need to move about. Yeah, that would be absolutely oh, yeah. brilliant, wouldn't it? Yes, yes, it would. Absolutely. I, if you could get everyone in the aisle at once, you, you might have to take turns. Be like, yeah. okay, now, now all B seats get up. Yeah. <laughs> I, th I think we should write to Richard Branson, you know, and say, hey, on your Virgin flights. <laughs> there you go. I have a new job coming. <laughs> <laughs> Teaching grounding on the airplanes. Yes. I, yeah. I, I, that's wonderful. I love it. Yeah. Well, that's, 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 that's an idea. Let's see where that one goes. We're throwing it <laughs> the universe. 
And before we know it, we'll be finding our flights. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's going to watch this video and they're going to say, hey, will you really come and teach Qigong on our airplanes? Yeah. And say, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and do it. I mean, if it's on Branson's planes, well. Yeah, um, hey. That, that'll, that'll, be, that'll be absolutely, <laughs> that'll, be, that'll be brilliant. So, Wouldn't it? It, it, it would. So if sort of like um, women, uh, you know, haven't actually done Qigong or, uh, you know, they're near anywhere they can do it or it's not it's not something they really want to do. How else can they connect um, with, with nature? Oh, well, I really encourage everyone, whether you're doing the practices that I teach or you have your own practices. I mean, I definitely highly recommend finding some type of movement and breathing practice to nourish your body. But I also recommend everyone get into nature and recognize the nature where it is around you. Because even in the cities, there are usually places where you can go find some water to be by or some trees in a park. If you're lucky, there are trees growing along the street that you're on. And then, and even those trees, I have had profound conversations with trees on the street. And so I'm one of, one of my other missions is to break the pattern of the fear of tree hugging. There's become this um, people say, oh, everybody laughs at me if I hug the trees. And, and so I, I recommend just take one hand and touch the tree and maybe even just in passing and just feel what it feels like to you. So to connect to a tree, what I recommend is to connect through all of your senses. This is also a big part of developing your intuition or connecting to your divine nature to recognize all the different ways that you bring information in. And so look at the details of the tree that you choose to connect with. Look at the details of the bark. How are the roots going into the ground? What are the shapes of the branches? What are the shapes of the leaves? How is the light coming through? And then use the sense of touch come closer and feel the tree what does the bark feel like and then what does it smell like so you don't have to i like to put my forehead right on the tree and breathe it in but you don't yeah. have to get that close in order to smell it you can have your hand there and just mm. smell the aromas that are emanating and then listen to the sounds. Listen for the subtle sounds of the tree. Maybe first you'll notice that there are birds or rodents rustling around. And then maybe you'll be able to hear the subtle sound of a tree. This one I haven't done, but they say that in the springtime you can hear the trees waking up and taking their first drinks of water. This is something I haven't actually experienced myself, but maybe you will, and it will be so amazing. And so really tune in to those sounds. And then even there may even be a taste that comes into your mouth by being with the tree and connecting. And then when you get really good at tuning into your five senses that we're all aware of, that's when those subtle awarenesses begin to wake up. And so notice how you feel. Notice if any thoughts or ideas come into your brain. Notice if any images come through. And pay attention. It may have meaning for you. And this is how I recommend using nature to connect to yourself. Yeah. And I think we're quite lucky here in, in the UK as well, because practically we, we are we, we are known for having lots of parks. And that no matter what, what city you're in, there, there's always kind of like somewhere where, where, there, where there are trees. Um, so, so it is crazy, you know, and in the park, no one really looks at you that much if, you, if, you're, um, 
if you're hugging a tree, which I've been known to do on more than one occasion. <laughs> and, uh, but but then again, it is you know, so I, as as you do, it'll just be I just put my hand up against the tree until people know walking past, you're just resting, and that you're, <laughs> you you know um, they you know they they you know they don't mind me personally. I don't mind if people see me hugging and touching trees because sometimes it can start very interesting conversations. And, uh, yeah. But, but, but it, yeah. I, I am, I'm a very proud tree hugger. I've been, I've had people laugh at me and I just say, yep, that's right. I'm a tree hugger. You should try it sometime. I tell them. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I've, I've got, um, I've got a male friend and that, you know, and if I put any posts about trees or, or anything, you know, he'll start making the tree hugging comments, but he, but he does it. He doesn't do it to belittle me. He does it because he knows that's my, you know, that that's one of my passions. And then it's, it's just, and I swear, I swear he does it himself. He just won't, he just won't let on. <laughs> and, uh, uh, he least appreciates it. <laughs> yeah, ex ex exactly. So, so yeah, so, so it is. And I suppose even if you don't have trees, um, you can even do it with plants in pots. And with, I'm guessing with, with them and plants in pots. Oh, plants in pots, yes, even with plants in pots, yes. And I I recommend finding whatever is near you that represents nature outside though, even even the sky. For for me, the um connecting with plants in pots is also good, but being outside under the mm. sky is important. Having yeah. that feeling of the expansion, of the expansiveness of the universe. And so sometimes that's where I find my connection is with the clouds, with the stars, with the moon and the sun. Sometimes it's water. If you have a body of water near you, that's a really powerful way to feel the connection of something greater that moves through all of us. And yeah, um, yeah. And, and then even like if you live in a desert, for instance, if you tune into the minutia, to the little things, there are, are usually anywhere, like you mentioned, the weeds coming up from the sidewalk. Mm. There are usually little flowers anywhere that you are or little little plants. And so, um, so yeah, you can do this with anything. And, and even when we bring this awareness into whatever situation we're in, so even if you're inside of an office building and you allow yourself to tune in to the subtle awareness to the minutia around you then you may find that there are connecting points that you were not aware of because you just walk by them every day yeah could be yeah. a view from a window or or like you said a potted plant yeah yeah, because unfortunately, some offices are in the middle of little cubicles, aren't they? And that's yeah. uh, so. So I'm guessing even you could possibly, even if you are, say, say like you are at work and you're in one of those cubicle things, um, and we know that some companies you can't really go outside during your like, you know, lunch break or stuff like that. You don't have to work at your desk. But I suppose you could even, if you had a picture of a tree. Mm. on on there maybe you know maybe you've, a photograph you've taken of a tree and you put so you kind of like connect with so so when you take the obviously ask permission from the tree to take the photo um and then connect with the tree and then so connect with the tree ask to take a picture of the photo then you can take that photo back to your little cubicle yes. and then during the day you could actually i suppose connect with with the tree then to yeah connect to your to um to your higher self and, and nature and everything mm -hmm. I love that and and yes I I have many because I go around um collecting tree friends I have many pictures of trees and pictures of myself with the trees and that does evoke the feeling to look at those pictures and then if you can create 
a little space, like don't call it an altar at your work, but that's mm. kind of what it is. If you create something for yourself, if you can have a small potted plant, that's always wonderful. If you can have, I, I really like crystals too. I have my yeah. fluorite here on me today. Crystals, like if, even just one or two crystals that you connect with and you can activate them outside and then bring that energy of the outdoors into your indoor work environment. You, you can create it for yourself with the pictures, with the, by having, and again, what you were sharing about being with the tree. So you have that experience to call mm. in that helps a lot. If it's a picture from National Geographic, it still might call in a feeling for you, but it won't be the same as if you've actually connected physically with that tree. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's if last last stitch case an emergency, yep, go to get a picture of a tree from from somewhere. Or even if you can, you're on the computer, pull one up. Yeah, pull it up on the computer, pull up a a little video there are some great little videos of trees and that can really help shift your energy in the day um more like and and then if you can take little um we call it micro dosing of energy alignment if you can learn some little practices of breathing and movement that you can bring into your office and just subtly move yourself around so that you're not getting stagnant. That's mm. going to help immensely, immensely. So those are the two things. That's why I bring the nature together with the movement because they're both really vitally important to our human health to move, to breathe. And I know we all breathe if we're alive, if you're alive, you're breathing, but <laughs> <laughs> the, the breath is, such a powerful access point because in in yoga philosophy they call it the penetrating body because it is the only action that we have in our body that is both autonomic meaning you can do it without thinking about it and conscious meaning you can consciously take a deeper breath so so let's actually do that right now just yeah. so we all get the feeling take a deeper breath excellent Ah, oh, see how much of your body you can fill with the breath, all the way from the lowest part of the belly through the sides of the body, the chest, opening the shoulders and the throat, and then a little sigh on the way out to release any stagnant energy. Yeah, it makes a huge difference. Mm. The breath is the primary nutrient of life. It is where we bring in energy. It is the most essential way that we bring in energy, the way that we can't survive without for more than a couple minutes. And mm. so, so when we consciously breathe and bring in more breath, then it activates parts of us that go to sleep otherwise. And the same thing with moving the body. If we aren't moving our body, then parts of it go to sleep. I mean, we've all had our foot fall asleep because we sat on it too long. Yes. Right? <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, we, yeah. we know that one. Or your, or your elbow or your arm if you're lying in bed and you wake up and it's like, my arm's gone. Oh, no, it's still there. It's just the things and needles. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah. So, so, so when you're talking that I was sort of like had a picture, you know, you're in, a, you're in your office and you're at a desk because most chairs are movable, aren't they? So, so I kind of like had, you know, it's good. I had a version, you know, you had sort of like a tree video playing or something and you're kind of like, going... just like that. <laughs> oh, I love that one. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. And even to just stretch back over your chair, just to yeah. open the front of the body because we get all hunched over after a time. Yeah. Or, um, and if you get sleepy at your desk, you can tap the top of your head and that, that really wakes you up quickly. I know that okay. one people might look at you, but it's also something you can do without moving too much that really makes a big shift in your energy. 
yeah and if anyone says anything i'm just scratching my head yeah yeah no um, nobody will pro most likely nobody will know unless you then do it all day if you do it all day exactly. they might be like what is up with you that you have your hand up there all day long <laughs> and the chances are if you're in one of those places where you're kind of like stuck working everyone else is going to be stuck working as well so they're not even going to look around yeah. and see yeah. and, and, and see what see what see what's going see what's going on um, mm -hmm. and that uh, um, so so it's really quite interesting that it really is very simple to actually connect with nature to help your divine nature as you know as as it, it's not it's not a complicated thing that you have to do lots of things you can do it really really start really simply oh absolutely that there's like yeah absolutely and so so really it comes to the breath like the the first place to start is with your breath and so take a deeper breath whenever you think of it and when you do take that deeper breath remember that the trees are breathing with you because the trees exhale oxygen and inhale carbon dioxide, whereas we do the opposite. And so that's a really powerful, simple, easy, quick way that nobody is gonna notice that you're taking a deeper breath. And so this is something you can do anywhere, anytime to reconnect to release stagnant energy and connect to your divine nature and to the greater force of nature that is all around us yeah that that's 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 absolutely brilliant um and i know rani said hello earlier so i'll bring it back again hello rani thank you for, for watching today we've kind of like had people popping on and off uh, viewer wise but nobody's really spoken today but that's probably mm -hmm. in a way I'm in a way that's quite nice because it means that when they have been on they've actually been listening which I won't show I have to admit when I'm watching when I'm watching um, videos um, mm -hmm. or live things I don't really tend to type away because I'm sort of like wow okay you know yeah yeah like I like yeah. that <laughs> question oh, no I just want to I just want to uh, just just want to go with, go with that so <laughs> Now, as you know, um, I do guided meditations and angel card readings. So each week I like to ask my guests, would you like a mini guided meditation or an angel card for yourself and those that are watching? So Kira, what would you like? Hmm. I guess let's do an angel card. Okay, that's absolutely fine. Everyone always chooses angel cards. Oh, really? That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't. I can't think why, and uh, but we we do we do love we do love angel cards. Now, um, as as people may be aware, when I do angel cards, I don't actually predict the future because I believe that everything should be in the present. So I always do the cards for what you need for your highest good at this moment in time, which is a little bit of contradiction. Bear in mind that I work with past life and I work with future life, but I actually believe in being in the present. But then the past life is. If you heal and you've got no worries about your past life, then you're fully present because you don't have those worries. And if you know your future, you don't have to worry future to your present. So, so I like everything to be in the present. So mm. let's see. Okay, so cast quick bless. So what do Kira and everyone who's watching this live and recorded need to know for their highest good at this moment in time? What does Kira and everyone who's watching this live Let's see what's going to come out today. Okay, so we have stay in focus, hold the course. Hmm. Which kind That's of like beautiful card. Yes, and it makes a lot of, of sense. We've got the stars in this, so we're connecting with the nature with the with the stars in there. We've got a little bit of Tessa as well. Um, but, but, but it is, you know, when it, when it says hold the course, to, to me what, what, the, what the card is, 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 saying, is saying to you all is, you know, stay focused on what makes you happy, what connects you with nature, what makes your heart sing, 
um, don't let the influence of other people um, and their thoughts or their suggestions actually take you away from what you know you should be doing um, at this moment in time. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm, it does, absolutely. And that, so, so yeah, it, it is kind of like, just stay focused on, on, what, on what you're doing at the moment and don't be sidetracked by the little things that may be coming in to distract you from, from moving further along your journey and along your path. And that, okay. if, 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 that, if, that, if that makes if that makes sense. Um, so if you are watching this, then uh, please let us know what you think. And we have Michael Warner who says hello. Hello, Michael. Hello. And that's so thank you for for, for watching. Um, for watching this show. So before we wrap up, um, Kira, do you have oh oh and Sieta? Hello, Sieta. We like we like Sieta. Or Sita. Mm -hmm. I always call her Sieta, it's actually Sita. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> she she's on a personal journey at the moment and she's doing absolutely wonders with it. And she was on my show a little while ago, and I'm hoping to she'll come back. She's doing a, um, uh, I think it's a 10k walk, and that oh, in, in, wow. in 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 June. I think it was 10 5k 10k something something like that. So yeah, when, when she gets back on, because yeah, she's uh, she's got a powerful message. So before we do wrap up the show, um, Kira, do you have any insights or thoughts that you could leave the people that are watching this? Insights or thoughts? Mm. Um, hmm. That's so wide open. Let's see. So um, I guess what I what I was receiving from the message that you brought through is um, how I have recently expanded what I am holding in my personal and my business world. And, um, and so it was such a powerful affirmation of just continuing to move forward and expand more. And so what I would, what I would like to invite in for the collective is that anything is possible you really do have the power to create your own destiny. And please feel free to reach out to me if you are looking for more tools to expand your capacity to hold the energy, expand your capacity to hold your vision, expand your capacity to hold your ground, to stand your ground. There are so many ways that we can connect more deeply. And so I really appreciate everyone who watched this live or on the replay for tuning in and receiving this wisdom. And I, I look forward to connecting with anyone that would like to learn more. Feel free to shoot me questions. Yep, um, and you can do that here, or you can, or, um, or you can contact Kira. So that comes kind of ties in nicely with if people do want to connect with you, how do they do it? Well, since we are broadcasting on Facebook, that is an easy way. I'm Kira Lani on Facebook, just like it shows on the profile. I also have a website, practiceselflove.com where I post my events and sometimes I'm sometimes randomly other things <laughs> you, can learn more, you can learn more about me there. And um, yeah, that's, that's probably the best way. I'm, I'm also available by email. If, if people want to reach out on Gmail, I'm Kiralani at Gmail as well. Yes. So, yeah. Cool. And what I'll do is I'll put those um, those, those uh, uh, links um, in in the actual post um, as a thing. And Michael Warner has said this card hits home for me. 
So I'm, I'm glad that that card meant something for you, Michael. Thank you for actually sharing sharing that with us. Um, mm -hmm. And that, and Sita says, yes, 10 k run, run in July. Awesome. So, Go, Sita. <laughs> yes, 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 it will be, it'll be absolutely brilliant. So I look forward to speaking to her after June when she's, when she's actually, uh, when she's actually done the run. So I hope everyone that you enjoyed this and found uh, this uh, conversation insightful and the words of wisdom Kira has given you um, will help you further on your journey. Um, and I would like to invite you all to share this video as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you and men as well. Um, you, you know, it encompasses um, everybody uh, that, 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 watches, that watches the show. And if you need help um, finding your destiny and get clear on your journey and your path, then I would love to be that guide for you. So reach out and connect with me as I'd love to book a free 20 to 30 minute uh, session via Skype or Messenger with you to have a quick chat so we can find out more about each other and how I can help you with your journey. And I will see you next Wednesday, the 10th of April, where I'll be having a conversation with my guest, Chrissy Astell, who's been working with angels for 20 years and is the author of five books relating to angels. We'll be talking about how you can shine your true energetic light. So thank you all for watching. Thank you, Kira, so much for being here. It's absolutely wonderful chatting to you. And I like it when people talk to trees. I love trees. Yay. Yay. So thank you. So everyone, I will see you next week and take care. Thank you.